started here. Here we go. Okay, we're recording. But we've still got two or three minutes before um, we officially start. Michelle got a $50,000 gift today from one donor. Woohoo, Michelle, you get the prize. Lynn, welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Ah, is that your beautiful sunny background? Sometimes I can't tell if it's a fake Zoom background. It's real. Oh, where are you right now? <laughs> where, where is that? Where is that? Today. Uh, you froze for a second. Say it one more time. It's 92 and sunny here today. Oh, and where are you? Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. That's right. That's where you yeah. are. How are yeah. you? I'm great. How are you? Good to see you, even virtually. Excellent. Excellent. You too. So you can see that people are coming in. We are a minute or two from starting. We've got, if you open your chat box, uh, you can see all the people and what they raised this week. Um, let's see, Roseanne's been on the phone with donors. She got a $100,000 gift annuity this week. Go, Roseanne! Wow. Uh, wow. Katie raised $10,000 for a student emergency food fund. Let's see, excellent. Um, we are just introducing ourselves. So we'll get started officially in two or three minutes, but Lynn, uh, everybody, Lynn's going to be our guest today, and I will introduce her shortly. Um, but Lynn, just by way of background for you, this is a weekly call that I'm doing for the community for the duration of this crisis. And I don't know how we're going to decide when it's over and when I'll stop doing these weekly calls. But um, I put the same thing on Facebook Live every week, and I'm yeah. like... Um, if this calls are going to stop either when I run out of clothing or when, <laughs> when I just disappear one day on a flight somewhere, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's such a wonderful thing that you're doing. So I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I think we all are trying to help uh, people raise yeah. as much money during yeah. this crisis as we can. Yeah. Whatever we can do to help people who work so hard at our nonprofit. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you for taking the time to be here. I think I will give people about one more minute to log on before sure. we officially get started and I introduce you. But let's, let's, so listen, I'm going to leave it to you if you want to have the chat box open or closed or the Q&A box open sure. and closed. We use both. Um, these are really town hall meetings, so I encourage participants to chime in with their own advice and recommendations and experience. Um, so it's not just us, uh, quote unquote, experts feeding advice, but it's, you know, real people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm giving... not an expert in a pandemic, let's put it that way. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, Oh, we've got Suresh from India. You might get the prize today, Suresh. Welcome. Um, hold on, but usually often we have um, folks from Australia, so they get the prize. I haven't seen them yet, but there's so many comments that um, that have gone by. But I'm, I'm so pleased to see everybody here today. And, um, oh, Amy's saying, oh, she... Amy saw you this morning and you were great. And I love her plant's name. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, I got, so, you know, I'm never home, just kind of like you were traveling. And so <laughs> at the start of this, my best friend, Angie, sent me a plant and she's like, here's something beautiful for you to take care of. Um, and norm I, normally I don't have a green thumb, but I'm really trying hard to keep him alive because I named him Tony after Tony Fauci. So, um, <laughs> I need him to stay alive. And so yes. if, I give another, if I give her another plan, I'm going to name him Andrew for Andrew Cuomo. Uh, so Brilliant. Lynn, are, yeah. listen, for those of you that don't know Lynn, you have just gotten a taste of what we're in for today. We are going to have a good time. Um, not only is she going to provide amazing advice, but uh, she's going to keep us entertained as well through this hey, session. So yeah. <laughs> whatever you can do, right? <laughs> Tony's getting replanted this weekend. I bought him a new house. He's really excited. He, uh, yeah, Tony's nice. a plant. So yeah. I figure nice. if I name him, it'll be harder to kill him. 
<laughs> we got to keep him alive, right? I, we got to keep Tony alive. So Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. So we're a couple minutes after. So let's go ahead and officially get started. Hi, everybody. Um, as you, I imagine, know, I'm Amy Eisenstein. I am so happy that you're here with me. I think this is week six or seven that we've been doing this. I don't want to count. Yeah, uh, seven that we've been home, right? Um, so deep breath. I think that's what we all need to do is, yes, take a deep collective breath and sigh out. So you know, on the one hand, the good news is that we're past the initial shock and crisis of it all. Um, and we've, we've gotten through sort of our emergency pivot, his mass hysteria. And now we're into, to me, we're into, I, I don't, we're not in a normal routine, but we're in a routine. And um, we are looking towards the future. We're, we're, done with the emergency crisis pivot, but we're, we're I don't know, I wanna think we're, we're coming up and looking to the future. Whatever, whatever, we'll, we'll talk about that, right? All right, so listen, yeah, so listen, today I have um, a colleague, a friend, um, a coworker, an amazing, amazing fundraiser, Lynn Wester. Yeah, I've invited her here because she is, one of the smartest fundraisers I know. And when she speaks, I listen. And I'm really, really excited to have her here. I've seen her uh, sort of on tour, on the big stage at fundraising co conferences. Sometimes we're speaking uh, at the same conference. Sometimes I'm just in her audience. And um, I always learn something from her. So I am so, so pleased. You may know her as the donor guru, the donor relations guru. That is her, I don't know, what do you call that? Your tagline, your moniker. Your, yeah, I stay your, name yeah. on my birth certificate, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, today we are, oh, so uh, Brianna is saying she doesn't see lots of comments in the comment box, in the chat box. So please do pay attention, drop that blue box down and write to all panelists and attendees. If it, you know, it's defaulted just to come to me and Lynn, the panelists. So if you want everybody to see your information, which I certainly do, be sure to click down and send it to everybody because we're gonna be sharing information and uh, yeah, so um, you're getting lots of virtual high fives in the chat box, Lynn, so right back at you. Yeah, all right, great. So today we're gonna be talking about donor relations and donor stewardship and what we should be doing in this time of COVID-19, um, if what's changed, what's stayed the same. So Lynn, I would like you to sort of give us some opening comments um, and just, you know, what are the top three or five or as many as you want things that you really hope that people are doing right now? Um, if you want to throw in common mistakes you're seeing, what, however you want to get us started. But I also want to invite people to open the Q&A box. If you have specific questions for Lynn, um, I'm going to be monitoring the Q&A box. So go ahead and type in your questions whenever you feel like it. But Lynn, why don't you start us off with um, what should people be doing now? What do you really want them to focus on? Uh-oh, Lynn's frozen. Lynn? Oh, dear. Bad, bad internet. Okay. So, Lynn, if you can hear me, go out, come back in. I'm not sure what. Um, maybe turn your video off. Oh, no! We were just here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna talk about donor stewardship until Lynn comes back. Um, you know what, I am going to, there she goes. She's gonna come back in, I am sure. Um, but go ahead and submit your questions. So let's go ahead and get started with some do's and don'ts with donor stewardship. Let's start in the chat box and make sure that you click and say to all attendees, what are you doing to steward your donors? To say thank you, to let them know how much you appreciate them, to, um, 
to let them know how valuable their gift was. Um, so go ahead and let us know in the chat box. Let me know what you're doing right now to really steward your donors. If you've changed or if you've done things the same. So yeah, I'm seeing phone calls, handwritten notes, um, email videos. Okay, email videos I like. So um, Lynn, you're back, you're back. Horrible. Uh, <laughs> okay, so hopefully the internet will hold this time, but in the meantime, I have asked people to tell us, let us know um, oh, what they're doing. So, um, you know, board calls to over 250 donors, Beth is doing handwritten notes. So many people are making it. phone calls and hand address, thank you letters, check in calls. Okay, so go ahead, Lynn, take it away. What, what are you recommending people doing? So I think the first and most important thing is to do exactly what I just did, stay calm. Um, I think that, you know, the tendency, uh, our world has just completely upended itself. And so I think the tendency for a lot of people is to panic um, and to do the deer in headlights thing. And I'm so many, unfortunately, nonprofits who aren't doing anything. Um, and so those, of, those nonprofits that are accepting action, so you have to move. You have to move. Don't get stuck. Do something. Um, and so don't get stuck in your old move. Make sure, you know, the word, the word of the year is pivot, 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 right? Um, be nimble. I, I can't tell you, you know, I, I come from a background where being nimble is, is my thing, but I didn't realize how nimble I had to be until this year. Um, you know, you go from spending 300 days tell on the speaking in public to being at home right and the, the nervous here is horrible and the cook is horrible because they're both me um so you know i've had to pivot and learn how to chicken because that i need to live and so so i think number one is stay calm number two is action the first thing and the most important thing is to um, communicate with your donors a sense of vulnerability sense of empathy and to get out there and tell them how much you love them so loving on your right now is the most important thing. Um, I think for a lot of us is, um, I, I think for a lot of us, uh, realizing that yes, charities are important now, if, if not more than ever, but there's a lot more things on our donors' mind now, whether family is healthy, whether they're employed, you know, one in four households now has someone employed or employed, thanks to COVID. Um, we have people, you know, my parents are 82 and 84 I'm, every day. I check multiple times a day. I video chat with them once a day. And I'm like, you're not allowed to leave the house. Do not leave the house. And so, um, you know, I'm worried about money. I'm worried about my friends. You know, I'm worried about the fact that it's been seven weeks since I've touched another human being. So sometimes our fundraising isn't the most important thing in people's minds. And we need to have for wherever our partners are that they will come around and Raising is happening. There's you. Okay, so Lynn's uh, connection stinks. So you know what? I am going to shut her video down and see if we can hear her. All right. Hopefully she'll be back in a minute. Let's go to some of the questions that she was um, about to answer. Uh, um, okay, so um, Amy's asking, uh, is it appropriate to mail hard copy communications about planned giving right now? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of mixed feelings, I think, about um, planned giving right now. And, I think you need to be really sensitive about this. I'd love to hear from the group if you're doing planned giving, um, if you are, if you're promoting it, you know, so on the one hand, lots of people are thinking about their legacy. They're thinking about, they have time at home. They're thinking about, um, about what's to come and and being prepared for the future so um, one smart organization i saw um, had a donor tell the story about why they did their plan giving um, i i don't know that i would do a mass mailing about it right now um, i would pick and choose i'd have it up and accessible on my website 
All right. Okay, so Lynn, let's <laughs> get, I'm gonna take you off video. Why don't you stop your video? Because then maybe your bandwidth will be better. What do you think? Yes. All right, as much yes. as we'd love to see you. <laughs> well, let's see how it um, goes and then we'll go from there. Okay, so, um, and then my last one was, you know, making sure that, you know, you're serving as a positive force in their lives. So um, being reassuring, being a helper, um, making sure that as a nonprofit, you're a giver and not a taker, I think is really important. So, um, I really, I really want you to think about this as a time to reshape the work that you're doing and to really think deeply about work that we've been doing over the past few years. And if, and if it, it, you know, one of the things that a disaster allows us to do is simplify. And so some of us are having to simplify right now. And, um, and so uh, that's something to think about. I saw some really good questions before I crashed out. And I'm sure, Amy, you have the Q&A that was before I crashed out. Um, there was one about an event. Um, and I've been giving some very candid, um, some people don't like it, event advice lately uh, or in the past Let's seven it. weeks. Let's um, hear it. It stirred up quite some emotion among people, especially fundraisers. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, and that is, I don't think that we're going to be having in-person charitable events in 2020. Uh, I work mostly with universities, hospital systems, uh, athletics teams, uh, things like that. And uh, I think, I, I'm sorry, uh, but it's not my fault. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to put 500 people in a room um, until we have a vaccine. People aren't going to want to gather. Um, I don't know how I'm supposed to eat food through a mask. Um, I'm just not going to take that risk. And most of your target demographic is in the 60 plus range. Um, and I think it's irresponsible to even try to put them at risk. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know what? I, I, love that visual of trying to eat through a mask. I mean, I think right. that, that that says it all and I hadn't heard it said that way before. Uh, you know, I, I, I always learn something from you, Lynn. And <laughs> well, I think, you know, you, you, that is the perfect example, analogy to give um, yes. your executive director, your board of directors, whoever's pushing back on you trying to schedule um, reschedule your events or schedule things for the fall. It's not yeah. going to happen. And it's not gonna you know, happen. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that I was just on a call earlier and I was saying, you know, I've seen so many organizations raise as much or more through virtual events. More, 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 more. more. And, and I'm sorry, but it's not just the face mask scenario. When I, I've been calling um, the day when I can go and live a more normal social life, Ali Ali Oxen Free. Whenever I can get Ali Ali Oxen Free, which it started here in Texas, but I'm not going out Ali Ali Oxen Free, I can guarantee you. Um, your charitable event is not where I'm going first. I can guarantee you that in the priorities of my life, I'm going to go hug my family. I'm going to go spend time with my friends. Hell, I'm going to a pool in Vegas and going to get fall down drunk. I'm going to be honest, right? <laughs> but I am not going to sit in your charitable banquet for three hours. And I also don't want you to spend that money during uncertain economic times. I'm really upset with charities who are like, but what about my event? And I'm like, your event in the grand scheme, 60,000 people have died. I don't care about your golf tournament right now. And it sends the wrong optics. And I know this is harsh, but I'm very honest. I've always been very honest. I will always be very honest. You know, Amy and I, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, she's New Jersey girl. So she gets New York and me comes out there. But, um, you know, why not? You And also just because you had an event in person doesn't mean you have to have a virtual event. Um, you can send an email. We're not allowed to have our event this year, obviously. Here's why. Please send in a donation and raise just as much money. It's much more efficient. Um, I've seen all kinds of, of virtual events that raise a ton of money from, you know, volunteer award ceremonies to everything. Um, but even if you think, oh, well, I'm going to start it with a 10-person event, who's going to start? Like, who's going to be the brave 10 people at your event? It's not going to be me. <laughs> 
(laughs) So listen, listen, here's the thing, you know, I'm, I'm watching the chat box and you know, there's going to be a lot of resistance to this. I I can feel it already. So, so here's the thing here. He, and, and disbelief that, that people are raising more from virtual events. Now here's, here's one very Very tangible tangible. example. Um, If you have an event and you have to pay for the venue and the food and the um, entertainment or the sound system and all the nonsense that comes with vir- live events. And so you were going to raise a hundred thousand at your event and you save 50 or $60,000 in expenses. Now you only have to raise $50,000 online at your virtual event exactly. and you've netted the same amount of money. And so don't work you know so the the scale is different i have my local um organization is doing their annual 5k in two weeks guess what they're doing um they've sent out uh logos their logo to everybody and saying put this in your window because we're gonna have a virtual run they've sent t-shirts or let us come pick up t-shirts in a very social distance way And they're encouraging people to post pictures in their run t-shirt online for two weeks before the date of the run. Um, People as they're out running are taking pictures as they see this logo in people's windows through the neighborhood. I guarantee they're going to raise more money. Greta's run kit. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Um, (laughs) Isn't that funny to have uh, local folks in, right? Yeah, so it is Greta's run. They're doing an amazing job. They're going to raise more money. So but Lynn, I'll let you have one more or two more words on events, but I don't want to get stuck there. I want no, to go I back don't to either. Yeah. But I think so, it's important because people are so dependent or they're so attached to them. You know, same thing for a golf tournament. You know, a golf tournament isn't the first signal that I want to send to people. So why not just have people golf and record their scores virtually and we can do it that way? I mean, I just don't see the need for this, um, this, this whole idea. Um, but again, um, you know, same thing, like, you know, we're not having homecomings, we're not having reunions. So I just think we need to reprioritize. Um, why did you have the golf tournament in the first place? Are you a golf related organization? Did you, I mean, did it fit your mission or did just rich people want to play golf because they can go play golf on their own, but I can't endorse a, a golf tournament when people aren't social distancing when there are two people in the same cart not wearing masks. So we have to be careful because we, as in the nonprofit world, we set um, precedent for people and people follow. You know, I was on a call earlier today with Kiwi and Julia and some other folks. And one of the things that I'm seeing is a common mistake that's being made right now in communications being sent out is um, the communications are great, but the photography is not appropriate for COVID-19 times meaning it's not socially distanced, people aren't wearing masks, and they're using old photography from their organization, Mm -hmm. where people are hugging, where they've got, you know, people, you know, doing everything. And so, um, as if it was normal, you can't have pre-COVID photography. It has to be responsible. You send a message to your patrons when you show them photography that's not responsible. Excellent. I, I love that. So let's go back to communications and stewardship. Sure. Um, you know, and, and I see that there are a lot of questions about events, so maybe yeah. we'll circle back later. But I, okay. I would encourage you to um, submit questions about how you're communicating with your donors, what you're doing to steward them. Um, Lynn, before you were talking about stewardship, and now I can't remember exactly what you were saying, but give some examples of good, um, of ways to talk to donors, what you say when, when you call. I think there's a lot of um, sure. questions around how to talk to people in this time and make sure that they're sensitive, um, that you're being, well, keep, go sure. ahead, finish, finish my thought. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think language matters. So I think talking appropriately that um, Corona is the name of the virus and COVID is the disease that it causes. Um, not calling donors heroes and not calling frontline workers heroes. They're very uncomfortable with the term hero. And I don't think that's something that we should be throwing around um, that, that, that adds pressure to them. I think we need to talk about real needs versus wants when we fundraise and 
when we do stewardship, the thing that matters the most is not what the donor has given to us, but who they are as a person. And we need to check in. How are you doing? Do you have any needs? Is there anything we can do for you? You know, the silver lining of COVID-19's pandemic is that people are more willing than ever to help. You know, um, you know, you said you've been doing these weekly. I've been doing free Facebook Lives weekly. I'll give you the shirt off my back if it helps you raise money and helps your nonprofit. You know, Amy asked me to do this. The answer was never no. It was always yes. Let me make sure that works for my schedule. Um, and I think that's a hallmark of our um, community. And so I think you need to, though, have empathy that, um, yes, we're all in this together all in this together from very different places. And so in your stewardship, in your donor relations, what is the impact that funding has helped on your organization? That clear now more than ever. Um, just because you know we're in an economic downturn doesn't mean you don't fundraise. You have to fundraise for needs and not wants. So this is where it becomes very clear what your needs and your wants are. You know, I, I tell my university clients, I have a lot of universities, as you can imagine, because that's my background. Um, now's not the time to raise money for your annual fund when you have a student crisis fund that is not fully funded. So until every student crisis applicant gets 100% of their funding, your annual fund doesn't matter as much. Um, some things that I've seen that work really well, and again, I'm going to encourage you to get uncomfortable get very uncomfortable, get very uncomfortable because out of discomfort comes vulnerability and your leaders need to be on video. Your, your staff needs to get comfortable with being on a screen, you know, or video and Lord, it's hard seeing myself, you know, eight hours a day, you know, um, on video, but, um, they need to be comfortable being vulnerable and not being perfect. Some of the best communications that have gone out aren't perfect. So if you wait for that, um, and so, um, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, have a great result there. So if you're waiting for perfect, it's not going to happen. We want to communicate often with our donors because sometimes just a person checking in on you saying, Hey, you know, you want to talk, How, what's going on in your world is enough. And so it's not a grand promise. It's just a connection from a human being to a human being. And, and that's, that's good enough. That, that really is good enough right now. Yeah. So there, you know, there's a lot of chatter in the chat box about different things that people are trying, you know, and successes that people are having because donors are home and picking up the phone. They really are. And they do want to talk. So, you know, and some, sometimes it's more like a, well, there's some questions about cold calling um, versus donors, you know, so, um, you know, what, what are some advice questions that you've had success with, or what kind of advice do you think we should be asking donors these days? Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah. I mean, um, I've done hundreds and hundreds of donor calls and client calls both um, since I've been home. And uh, the first thing is if you're going to do video, you want to be human. Um, you don't need to dress up in a suit. You don't need to be fancy. You know, I've, some of you saw me today, I've got a ponytail and I'm outside because it's a nice day. Um, you know, Amy, because I can see her, her kids' artwork in the background, um, which inspires me. Um, I don't have kids, so to see, you know, cute things um, is really nice. Um, I stay away from scripted anything. I find that scripts are limiting. Um, uh, we're not cold calling people because they've given a gift to our organization. So you already have something in common. Hopefully you give a gift to your organization as well. And you can have a conversation about why they support your organization and why it's important to you. Um, stay away from scripts. I try to be as human as possible. So if the dog interrupts you, if the kid interrupts you, totally okay. Um, that's okay too. Being human, you know, um, happens as well. So, um, I, think, I was on the phone with a donor. Yeah, Lynn, yeah, let's, let's distinguish between scripts and bullets. 
because oh, yeah. I think I think that for a lot of people who are nervous or new to this, yeah. bullets can be super helpful. Um, yes. You know, and talking points. So, you know, what do you want to say? What points do you want to make? So short, short bullets just to keep you on track and remind you of things that you can say are perfectly fine as long as you're not reading a script. Totally agree. It's the reading of the script. I love bullet points, you know, put, and the bullet point that people often forget is to smile. Um, you know, just of a phone call people can hear that I'm sure you can hear that in my voice when I smile and um, I think people forget that because they get so nervous what I don't want is a voicemail that's like hi my name is Lynn I'm calling from this organization I wanted to say hi how are you doing during the COVID-19 pandemic did you know that our like that is awful and so <laughs> you know but I've received two of them ready and I'm like oh bless them they're just nervous you know right. so um, but I will say that I think the best strategy also is to try to reach out to the donor and schedule the call that the, the next tip I was going to give is that I've middle of the day like lunchtime is really bad for the parents with kids and um, dinner time like while they're trying to prepare the meal around dinner time late afternoon is really good people are zoomed out they're <laughs> they're kind of tired of their office they need a break and a welcome phone call at two or three in the afternoon is lovely sometimes so um, uh, either that or in, in the morning, but in the morning, a lot of us are on scheduled meeting calls now. So, um, but also you can schedule those calls with your donor, um, but be, be forewarned around meal times because they're having to cook, they're having to homeschool, they're having to, you know, <laughs> do so many things. These parents, I don't have any kids and I'm just in awe of what my, my team with kids is doing in a day. So, um, but also, just get out there and call. Like you forget that human contact is the thing. That's the thing. All right, so Lynn, we've got a couple of questions about when we're calling donors. So Rebecca says a lot of our donors are expressing financial concerns, shrinking portfolios, companies worrying about the economy. Um, so how do we ask for money on the heels of those comments? What would you say to that? Yeah, I express financial concerns every day. I believe me, I I completely understand that, but I'm still giving. And so I think givers give, uh, takers take. Uh, and so one of the things I like to do is ask permission if it's okay to talk about those kinds of topics. Some people find that it brings anxiety to talk about that. Some of us think it's relieving. Um, you know, I, I try to find out if they own a small business. If they own a small business, really hesitate before I ask. Um, but if they're like, hey, business is booming at video company, you know, it's a different conversation. But I also, my, my trick right now is asking people if they would support us monthly so that we could count on their support both now and in the long term. And if I say to them, I was just one right now, now I live in Austin, Texas. So when I say to somebody, hey, will you give up a margarita a month? People know what that means in Austin. So, <laughs> you know, that's seven or 10 bucks a month or you know, will, will you give up some chips and queso for me? See, I try to make it human, a human sacrifice because we've already sacrificed so much. Um, because what I say to them is, did you know that a margarita a month means that I have a student who that, that can provide them a meal plan? Yeah, in Seattle, you give up a latte, right? So, you know, <laughs> think about that's journal access, online journal access for one student for a month for the journals they need to have while they're at home studying remotely. So that's what I say to them. You give up a margarita, I get a journal subscription for a student. So you have to make it, what I'm not doing is saying, can you give us a thousand dollars? That's mm. not happening. The other yeah. things I'm not doing, and, and there's competing advice out there about this, so I wanna tread carefully, but also I have a bold opinion about this. Please don't ask people for their um, stimulus checks. Do not ask them for their 1200 or their 2400 whatever they've gotten, because understand that in order to get a stimulus check, you had to have made less than $75,000 a year the year before. So they may already be struggling. And then um, the tax deduction is $300 per household. It's not $300 per person. So you can't say, well, if everybody just gives us their $300 tax deduction, um, I, I think that's awful. So please, that's my opinion. Now, Amy may yeah. differ from me, but I, I don't like using the CARES Act or 
Yeah. Um, I would, I would, as an I would, I would agree. I am very much against asking for stimulus money as a replacement for donation or how they right. give. Um, so I want to go back for just a quick second to the person who was asking if somebody is telling you that they're having a hard time financially, you know, in some cases, I think that I, I love the idea of a margarita a month. I mean, that's such an, you know, you know, $15 a month. Uh, a margarita is a lot more than that on on my side of the country. Yeah, you know? it is. <laughs> it would be it would be twenty five dollars a, a month. Yeah, it but, would. But I do think that we want to be super respectful of people that are going through a hard economic time right Absolutely. now, and um, and thank them for what they've done in the past, and tell them that you know we'll look forward to them returning as a donor when things get better for them. And so you know I think you have to judge each situation. Um, and really listen to what your donor's telling you because some people will not be in a situation even to give a margarita a month. Um, and we want to be super respectful of that. Right. But that should not stop us from asking because 80% of people will want to give and will want to help. And so just because yes. a few people can't or won't does not mean that we should stop asking. So that I want to um, really, really emphasize. Okay, so Steph is asking, a lot of advice is saying to ask donors um, if there's anything we can do for them. But what, you know, what could we really do for them? Or what, it, what if we're not really able to offer them anything? Do you, do you have, do you, have you ever told people what can we do for them? Do you recommend that? Um, yeah, I, I often say to donors is that if there's anything we can do for you and you'd be surprised. Um, they're so humble. Um, I've had donors say, well, will you pray with me? Will you pray for us? I've had donors say, well, you know, um, if you could just understand that maybe I won't give as much this year. I've not had a donor say, well, I'd like a watermelon diced in one inch cubes or anything weird like that. Um, I haven't had them ask for things that I can't provide. I think, you know, most of the donors I've uh, talked to have said, um, do you think there's any way this communication could continue? And I've said, absolutely. How about next Tuesday, we have a date and I set a date and a time. I have some, you know, it was funny because um, Shannon, my concierge said, hey, Amy wants you to jump on a little early. And I was like, oh, but I'm on a committed call that I had made a commitment with a person to be on because they said, hey, is there any way you could check in on me again? And so um, I did that. I also think that if a donor does point out that they have a need, look, we're caring people. We should absolutely try to connect. I see some of you trying to provide food. Can I connect you with some mental health services? Because you just never know that you might be the call that saves them from a dark place or saves them from not a good situation. So I, I actually think as humans, we should try to do what we can to help people. So I, I, I but I just haven't, I haven't had the experience of them asking me for something that I couldn't provide. Um, I even had, um, I even had uh, a donor where I asked one of my gift officers um, to go and physically check in on the donor and, um, and he did, he brought a pie. So, um, you know, and left it on her doorstep, but he was able to see her through the window and he had on a mask and was protected and everything. But I said, I want you to physically go look at her and make sure she's all right. So yeah. Great. Don't Excellent. forget to rely on your board. Yeah. Your board has resources. Your staff has resources. We yeah. Are let's, a village. let's talk about that, Lynn. What would you have your board doing right now? What would you advise people to have? How can their board members help? So I'm a firm believer in that my board may not be the best askers. So I involve them with, um, uh, my nonprofits, I start every single board meeting by having them write five handwritten thank you notes. Um, and I have them write them to first time donors and then long loyal donors. So the first thing I'd be having my board do is sending videos, sending handwritten cards, calling folks, long loyal donors, especially because those are going to be your older population. And then first time donors, anybody who makes their first gift during COVID 19 during this pandemic, that is an extraordinary thing that they're saying, I've never given to you before, but I trust you enough.
Uh oh, I lost Lynn. Did we lose Lynn? Okay, so I'm going to finish her thought and hopefully we will get her back. Um, let let few of you let me know in the chat box if you can hear me. Little... Oh. Yeah, are you there? Okay, we lost you for a minute. Oh, You're sorry. back. All right, go um, ahead. Um, so, so one of the things you can do is create a little video toolkit for your donors. Uh, I mean, for your board to film videos for donors. Oh, Lynn, I don't know where you are, but your internet um, is. That would be something. Yeah. So, Lynn, we're losing you. So, I'm just going to fill in for a minute. So, um, I love the idea of doing. You're losing me? Are you yeah, there? Yeah. Now. All right. All right. We're going to give you. Uh, we're going to give you one more try. And if we lose uh, you. <laughs> so sorry. All right. That's all right. You were talking about been board on the members. whole time, and I've got video off. Yeah. So again, I have board members make calls and thank donors, but I have them thank not the big donors, small donors, right? So donors who give small amounts over time and then anybody who made their first time gift during this pandemic should absolutely get a call from a board member. I mean, how humbling that they trusted you for your first gift during this pandemic. That's fantastic. Yeah, people want to know what's in the what's in the video toolkit. What are you telling your board members? Yeah, so it's got uh, tips and tricks for how to shoot video, and then it's got a couple of supplies they can buy on Amazon to make their video better um, mm. using a phone at home. Um, and it's just got um, video tips and tricks, and it's all free on my website. So if you just go to donorrelationsguru.com, there's a whole whole uh, COVID section, and it has hundreds of free resources, including the video toolkit. And the Great. video toolkit costs under a hundred dollars, so it's not expensive at all. All right, I'm gonna put it in the uh, donor relations guru g u r u dot com slash covid nineteen. Oops, c o v i d nineteen. If I can type. Yeah. Ta -da. Okay, so it's in the chat box. All right, so let's see. Oh, the questions are piling up. Um, is there a, are, are you following along? Is there any specific one you want to answer or you want me to just ask you one? Well, it's interesting because we got one that said we avoid asking our major donors to become monthly donors. Yeah. Why? 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 <laughs> um, I have donors who give $200,000 a year monthly. Um, they do it on their credit card and they get points and miles. I'm a major donor and I pay all my major gift pledges monthly. So to me, that's a convenience that you're offering me and I'm able to give more because I'm it up monthly. That's how I live my life. So yeah. You know what? I, I want to focus on that for just a minute um, and go back to the person uh, or to the idea that people can't give or won't give right now. So I want to re-emphasize the idea that uh, that people do not generally make monthly gifts or annual fund gifts of any kind out of assets. They make them out of their cash flow. Correct. And so um, when you're thinking that this might be a bad time to ask, just because the stock market has gone haywire, most people are not making gifts unless it's to a capital campaign or a, or a super uh, sophisticated donor. They're not making gifts with the, their stock or their assets. They're making gifts out of cash flow. And Correct. so for the vast majority of people, and I know that unemployment is at an all-time high right now, but most people are still working and have not lost their jobs and their cash flow actually what's in the bank may have increased because they're not going to the bars, they're not going to yep. restaurants, they're not going to the theater, they're not traveling, they're not going shopping, they're home and they wanna help. So don't make the assumption that people can't give or that they can't um, make a regular and ongoing gift. I so, completely agree, Amy. There's a difference between liquidity and income giving and asset giving. Uh, right now, the donors I'd be targeting is anybody with a donor advised fund as well. Anybody who socked money away to give later in a donor advised fund, be asking them to liquidate that donor advised fund and give that now. They've already received their tax benefit and it's a great group. Uh, you know, in university land, we've had great, we've had donors who say, here, take my whole donor advised fund, whatever's left in it you can have. 
And so, um, <laughs> All right. and yeah. so we had good success. Yeah, so Cynthia is asking, who do we target for a monthly giving campaign? And I would say, who do we not target? Who but why don't you target? answer? Yeah, why don't you answer ah, that one? Everyone, yeah. again, this is how we live our lives in monthly installments. And I agree with you, Amy. A lot of my friends who are families are like, well, I'm spending more on groceries, but a ton less on going out, gas, you know, lots of savings liquidity wise is being captured. I, um, for years, for about four years, our default ask is monthly. So um, I don't know why we're not switching to that. Maybe it's an administration thing. Um, but our donors really enjoy giving monthly. It also means I can do ongoing stewardship. So Lynn, listen. So Megan says we've only had modest success with uh, converting donors to monthly giving. So let's talk about some language about why donors would give monthly and how we would uh, position that ask. Talk about ongoing giving and how that's such a benefit to organizations. So one of the things I learned early on is you need a name for your a monthly giving group. So at Maine Coast Heritage Trust, I work with them. We call them the anchors. They're the anchor of our support. At um, Make-A-Wish, they're the wish makers. At Charity Water, they're the spring. Um, at Team Rubicon, I'm the support squad. I think having a name, first of all, an identity, of a group that feels gives. Um, so that's one thing. Number two, you have to have your technology and your gift processing systems there. So um, it should be the default ask on your online giving form. And you should also have a program called Credit Card Updater, which is very cheap. And it auto updates with the next credit card number so that your credit cards never expire. And those should be processed automatically. A human being doesn't charge those gifts every month. So you That's can use Stripe, you can use all of the, so the technology you need there. And then finally, the third component, I think, and um, I listen to Erica Wasdorp on anything monthly giving. She's like a genius around this. But the third component is um, I need tangibles. $10 a month does this. $50 a month does this. $100 a month does this. You need to tell me what that's doing. Uh, so it's, um, uh, so you need to have that. Um, it's not a different, it's not a different credit card. It's called credit card updater. Um, and, um, it's a service provided by you. Like if I use authorized.net, some people use TouchNet. whatever your credit card processor is, you pay them a fee and they go out and get the next number in your credit card. So that's very important. Um, so I think those three things are key and you can really, I mean, if you look at the world wildlife fund and you look at charity water and you look at team Rubicon folds of honor, um, they have the wingman club. Um, and so having that name, having that belonging, and then having a program, you know, here's what $20 a month, here's what buys you, right? Yeah. Put your night out on the town buys you. You've got to have uh, tangible too. Yeah. All right, good. Talk about stewardship for monthly donors. What are you sure. sending them every month? What are you sending them annual, annually? What are you sending sure. them after the first gift? So talk sure. about stewardship for this monthly donors. This is really good. I get in. Me. This is like exciting for me. So the first thing is when they set up their monthly gift, we want to laud them. We want to tell them how much we appreciate their support, right? So right when they set it up, then we kind of want to give them some room to breathe. So I usually talk to my monthly donors um, once a quarter, once a month at most, but we don't send them the, you know, I don't send them a thank you every month. I don't send them a month. We do that once a year in the start, but updates on what um, their giving does, lives they've impacted. Like one of the things that Charity Water does is at the bottom of my spring statement is it tells me how many people got clean water that month as a result of my $35. So I was able to provide 49 people clean water last month just with my gift. So um, I love that. Uh, so tangible outcomes, but, and then the time to really thank them and then ask for their increases at the end of the year, calendar year, right? So in December, you say increase your impact, go from $15 to 20 a month, right? And then in January, you do the nice um, tax receipt statements 
um, and thank them for their support year. Give them their total, how much they've given, things like that. Great. All right. That's super, super helpful and tangible because I think that that really is a mystery to lots of people. Um, and if you can grow your monthly giving club or membership now, um, you are going to be set for the future because not um, only is this group um, the most loyal set of donors, they really, um, your donor retention will skyrocket yes. when you shore up your monthly giving club. Um, these are your loyal donors that love you. And I think that, yes, a special thank you when they join the monthly giving club, really acknowledging that they've done something special because they're going to support you all year round. Um, but also, uh, Oh, so Jane, I, I said membership. I don't mean members, you know, I don't mean membership in the sense of joining the Y or membership no. in terms of anything like that, but just their monthly commitment. Um, uh, I didn't literally mean membership, but just, you know, they joined your monthly giving club. They're now, they're, they're members of the club now. They're in, they're yeah, supporters they're in. of your organization. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, so many questions, so little time, but I love this conversation. Um, okay, um, what else do you want to cover here? Uh, um, let's see. Do you have a target monthly? Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, let's see. Let's see. What are some questions we want to look at? Oh, you know what? Rona's asking, we have a new ED starting this month. How do I set up the get to know you meetings um, with donors as in-person meetings seem unlikely? Let's talk about that. Oh, let's I talk about virtual meetings this. and solicitation. Yeah. Yes. So I would find a local business in your area, a local coffee shop or local tea shop, and I would buy some little packets and have them sent to the donors with a handwritten note that says, will you have coffee with me or tea from your new executive director and um, have them contact your exec, you know, invite them to coffee or tea um, to do that with. Um, donors virtually, you can FaceTime, you can Skype, you can Zoom, you can just call them on the phone, but ask them to share and say, you know, maybe the executive director introduces a little something about, uh, about themselves, like, I wanted to send you this um, passion fruit tea. I'm very passionate about joining this organization, or, you know, um, I enjoy this honeysuckle blend. It's my favorite, or I hope you'll come to like it. Um, so I love that idea. Uh, you, if, if you're in a metropolitan area, you can send a Starbucks digital gift card and say, please have coffee with me. If you're in a Starbucks-y kind of environment or Dutch Brothers out there, or, you know, if you're in Canada, that's, uh, oh, what's the Canadian one that they love? Not Dunkin' Donuts, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they go crazy for it. No, Tim Hortons. Oh, Tim Hortons. Tim yeah, Hortons. there we that's go. It. Yeah, yes, like everybody's yes. like, Tim, Tim, Tim. <laughs> Yes. All right. Um, so listen, that is so brilliant. Sending people tea or coffee, a teeny little gift yep. that, um, you know, that won't cost you more than $15, uh, you right. know, the whole package, mailing it and whatever. Um, honestly, if you're local, you could even leave it on their doorstep and set up a virtual meeting. What I think is really important with virtual meetings is that you meet the donor where they are. So just ask them, how do they? How do you connect with your family and your kids and your grandkids? Do you Skype? Do you Zoom? Do you uh, do you, you know whatever it is? Do you FaceTime so that they don't have to learn a new technology? But let's right. get together over tea, and and you know the important thing. I mean, to me, a new a new person, a new staff member. The question is about a new executive director. But if you're a new development director. It's a wonderful opportunity to reach out to people and say, listen, I, I'm new. I need you to tell me what's special yes. about this organization. Why have you been a donor? What would you know, encourage you to continue to give? What have we done well? And what do you hope for this new organization or this organization as I formulate my vision and my plan? So being new, that is a no-brainer. It's easy to yeah. get out and connect yeah. with people. I have um, a nonprofit that's doing what's called ding dong dashes. 
and mm. they're buying ding dongs and they're attaching handwritten notes to it and they're ringing someone's doorbell leaving the ding dong and the notes and then video meeting with them later as a way to get in the door with donors who they haven't met with before so they're doing physical and they're having a great time they're driving around neighborhoods and they're ding dong dashing people so um <laughs> You know yeah. creativity right it's really creativity it's it ah lynn you're brilliant and your internet stinks okay so when we get back uh lynn back in a minute which we seem to do um i'm gonna give her some last wrap-up words but in the meantime um i want to highlight an opportunity that i sent you all by email um a few hours ago uh, and so i am um lynn if you can hear me or if you start yeah, talking I can hear you. My oh. internet's fine zoom oh. is not fine Oh, Zoom is not fine. Is oh, not I'm fine. so sorry. All right, so in just a minute, I'm going to finish okay. my thought and then I'm going to ask you for some final parting comments. Um, but I sent everybody an email a few hours ago because I am putting together a cohort of eight organizations that I'm going to take through an eight week process um, mm -hmm. of a mini condensed capital campaign uh, to raise $100,000 or more in the next eight weeks. So if nice. you want to be part of my first cohort um, of eight organizations, I'm doing it through, I'm wearing my other hat, the Capital Campaign Toolkit hat, um, for those of you who know that I also do that. Um, yeah. So I am, we've, we've figured out how to do a condensed emergency fund campaign in eight weeks. We're going to take the first eight organizations to respond um, through that campaign, look for an email that came from me two or three hours ago for all the details. But I'd love to hear from you if you're interested or if you have questions about it. Um, let's talk about that. So, Lynn, yes. final words. What what do you what are your parting thoughts and wisdom that you want to leave everybody at? Um, I think um, first of all, the work you do is inspiring, and the work you do makes a difference. So don't forget also to take care of yourself. Um, we're not working from home, we're working during a pandemic, and we need to be kind to ourselves and others. And so make sure that you're, if you need a nap, take a nap. If you need a break, if you need, a, I went and got a drive through daiquiri the other day because I needed a drive through daiquiri. I, I don't worry, I don't drink all day, just some of them. Um, and, not, and not while driving, right, no, Lynn? No, 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 I did not drink and drive. It's a sealed cup, don't worry. <laughs> but you need to be kind to yourself. Talk to a friend, you know, talk to your therapist, get, take a walk, do a puzzle, you know, take care of yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And then what I do once a week is I sit down and I'm writing five handwritten thank you notes to either start or end my week in gratitude. Um, it centers me on what matters most. Um, it reminds me that I have so many people in my life to be grateful for. And um, I think it's just a great way to remind yourself that giving gratitude actually makes you feel better as well. And there's so many givers out there and we can do things big and small to help people feel good about what they're doing. And then finally, um, take one risk a week, something risky, something that you're worried about, leap, uh, move, don't get stuck. Um, you know, take a moment to do something that you might not have normally done, be uncomfortable, you know, take a risk, um, you know, really think about your work and retool that work um, and reach out. You know, you're already doing this by getting professional development. You know, Amy's right. Once a week, we do this until we go ollie ollie oxen free or until the world <laughs> doesn't need us anymore. Um, but we're here to help. That's the other thing. I've had so many people email me or people I'm sure email you, Amy, and go, can you help me with this? And the answer is going to be yes. I, I have yet to say to someone, oh, I won't help you. And uh, it's not, oh, I'm going to help you. And it's the X amount of dollars an hour. It's let me help you. Right. And so Good. make sure that when someone else asks you for help, you're helping them back. Yeah, Lynn, so I know we've put it in the chat box, but where can people help you and what kind of, uh, where can people help you? Uh, where can people find you? And, um, and yeah, and, and tell them about your, uh, your Facebook, uh, Facebook 
say Facebook Live. Uh, every Wednesday, it's okay, Amy. It's COVID brain. Yeah. Every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we do a Facebook Live happy hour, um, and we do webinars once a week. We have an entire COVID webinar series. Um, mm -hmm. We're on LinkedIn under Lynn Wester. That's Lynn with an E, and you can find all of it. Um, we donorrelationsguru.com and tomorrow, which is Friday. See, I don't even know what day it is. Tomorrow, we are actually going to put out for free our swap of thousands of COVID um, templates. We've collected COVID um, information from hundreds of organizations. And so you can go look at the COVID material swap and it's all free. So we are trying to get you information as soon as possible. So great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Lynn, it's been an inspiring hour. I know I enjoyed it and I always feel better after these calls because I have, so, oh yes, show yourself again, please. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Um, you know, the, the comments and the help and um, care from each other are just inspiration in the comments box and it always leaves me feeling great after one of thank these calls. Well, so thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. All right. Take care. Enjoy that sunshine. I'm jealous. Talk to you soon. Bye.